Space travel, it's increasing, especially with dark fusion. It, you can fit the dark fusion power into a spacecraft, if a, lar a sufficiently large spacecraft, like naval um, vessels, large uh, naval vessels can have dark fusion power plants on them, just like we have today. Basically, dark fusion power at this point is the same size as our current day nuclear power. So picture what can fit a nuclear power plant inside of it, and you think large naval ships. And then, of course, spaceships would fall into that category, too. The Mars population reaches over 1,000 in the early 22nd century. And dark elements are discovered on Mars. And that fuels getting more people there because all of a sudden now there's a monetary reason to be on Mars. Whereas before it was always scientific, now it's actually monetary. So Now it's, I can raise my family there. Right, because there's money to be made. Yeah. So the extensive mining operations exist on the asteroid belt as well on Mars, and uh, there's regular manned missions to other planets and moons. So we're starting to really get to know our solar system. I can't say it's fully mapped. That's a, that's a big task to say we know where everything is and exactly how big they are and where they all are. There's so many little things in our solar system that, that we don't even know about. But there's regular manned missions. We even have our first manned mission to Pluto. <laughs> yeah. The, the non-planet. I don't know why I laughed at that. It's just... It's Sounds funny, it doesn't does it? It does sound funny. Yeah, but eventually, like in Star Trek, they pass Pluto all the time. We just never hear about it. Poor Pluto. Not no, even it's, a planet it's anymore. Not romantic. It's like, no, let's go to Mars. Let's go to Venus. Let's let's go go to Pluto. Pluto. No, 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 it's just this little ice ball. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's the first manned mission to Pluto. Just, I'm just trying to give kind of a scope of how much we're exploring the solar system, that we can get out that far without killing ourselves because our bones don't even work anymore. So they've, they've, you know, they're using artificial gravity where they can. Um, and to allow it actually for these long-term flights in space. How does that work with like aging? You mean because of the whole time dilation thing? Yeah. They're not going near the speed of light. So it's almost like taking them to get there. Five years? I don't know. I haven't calculated that. Okay. We can get to Mars if we have pretty efficient systems within a month or two. I know like with today's systems, it's, it's pretty, it's, they said about six months, but if you really you know, factor in future technology and everything, you're looking at like a month trip to get to Mars. Uh, so the Pluto would be a lot farther, it'd be a few months, maybe a year. Maybe they have faster systems by then allowing them to get there. Regardless, the first manned mission gets to Pluto. How long it takes to get there, I didn't write down those details. Uh, everything's still slow though. We're, we're nowhere near a near speed or near light speed travel and definitely nowhere near a faster than light travel. Any research into that is still very theoretical, just like it is today. Like we don't have any real experiments going on in space to send somebody faster than light. And this still isn't really happening in the early 22nd century. The other big thing that happens in the early 22nd century is a man, a German scientist, computer scientist actually, by the name of uh, Friedrich Hossmann. Recognize that name? Hossmann, yes. Hossmann. He develops a neural software that finally achieves the ability to imitate self-awareness. I say imitate because how can we know if it's actually self-aware? Because it's imitating it, right? Like for all I know, you could not actually be self-aware. You can just be perfectly programmed to act like you are. Well, I am half human. So you are imitating self-awareness as far as I know. And it includes pattern recognition, common sense, emotions, high-level human interaction. This became nicknamed the Hossmann gene. Now for anybody who's been following Dark Potential or back when it was called Primal Horizon, this is not a new idea of mine. This is something I originally came up with. And uh, this Hossmann gene basically it's not one program, it's more a science of how it works. And so once he, he patents it, of course, because he's actually able to, to nail down the algorithms, and you're able to create different levels of these programs. And the more complicated the programs, the more memory they take up, the more space. So a small device can't really, be, can't really have a full-blown Hossmann gene program inside of it. And so it's, it, is, it is restricted by the power of the computer that it's being used with and all these other things. And so the Hospin gene, the easiest way for you to kind of understand what it is and how it works, it's a software interface. It's meant to, it doesn't do anything on its own except imitate humanity. And so what it is is a communication device between humans and computers. So for example, let's say I have a calculator. Right now the only way for me to do calculations on it is to press the buttons yeah. in a certain order and then it'll give me an answer. So there's an input, and then there's an output. You can learn to use a calculator, it's a pretty simple device. But what if you want to use a more complicated thing where you're not quite sure what the question is, and you need to work it out? You have to say, okay computer, I'm trying to figure out 
if I have, let's, let's, uh, I have this many of this object and it weighs this much and I'm trying to figure out what would the average dispersion of matter be amongst it, but I'm not quite sure what the formula is. Well, a calculator is not going to help you because you need to tell it exactly what you're calculating. But you stick a Hausmann gene in between the calculator and yourself. In other words, you, you install a Hausmann gene onto this calculator, which wouldn't be a very complicated one because it's, there's not a lot of memory in a calculator. You'd be able to talk to that Hausmann gene, the Hausmann engine or whatever you want to call it, and it would use common sense and you know, tap into its stores of knowledge and be like, and tap into the calculator stores of knowledge, not its own because it doesn't have any, and it would be able to figure it out with you. It might not know the answer, it might ask you clarifying questions, it might, it just interacts with you. And so you're able to all of a sudden interact with your calculator as if it was a person. Now it would be a very basic intelligence level, so it's not like um, Iron Man where his butler basically is a human being just over a, a communications device, like it's different. That would be a very complicated Hossman gene. Jude Law's voice. Yeah, exactly. That, that's, a, that's like the high, 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 high level Hossman genes. You don't actually get those in very many systems because they're not necessary. You don't need somebody to give witty remarks to you whenever you're trying to figure out something for your, for your Iron Man outfit. So that, that's more just, you know, that, that's typical sci-fi when it comes to AI, that they just act like humans. And we can achieve There's that. There's no explanation for it. Exactly. Other than that Tony Stark's a billionaire and he's a genius. And he's able to make whatever he wants. So you find them in simple devices. Your phone, like basically they start to get integrated into everything um, slowly over time. Like your, your phone will have a Hosman device because you just need to kind of ask you, like, you know what, I, I kind of want to, I'm, I'm going here, I need directions. And rather than having to give it all the details, it's able to know you, have, you know, it's able to intelligently go through the information that it has. And so there's less input that you have to give it because it's like talking to a person. There's a lot of input you got. You got to know like the exact address right now and uh, like where you're starting. Like, there's yeah. a lot of things you got to know now. Like if I said, I want to go to Dave's house, if I told that to a computer today, it'd be like, Dave, okay, searching Dave. Boom, here's a thousand million addresses that have Dave's living at it. And that doesn't include the ones that are just D in the phone book as, as, a, as opposed to the full name. But the Hosman gene would talk to me and I would talk to it. It would, it would know my information. It'd be like, okay, Dave, he probably means his friend. And, and then it might need to ask clarifying questions. Like, do you mean your friend, Dave? Or do you mean your coworker, Dave? And I'd be like, yeah. And it's like, okay, all right. And, uh, and it might ask a question like, do you want to get there quickly? Or you know, there, there is possibly some traffic. Like it'll, it'll be more complicated than your simple interface. And it imitates self-awareness. It imitates human emotions. And it imitates all these different things. Does it get mad at you? Sure. Really? Like yeah. you're being dumb? Like, <laughs> stop it! it Maybe. It depends on the programming of it. See, the, that's the thing. This is, it's, it's a pattern and can really be created into anything. So if the programmer wants to make it so it has emotions, like your calculator one might not have any emotions. It might not, it, it'll just, it'll talk nicely because it has nice voice patterns and stuff. It's not gonna be like, na 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 kind of thing. It'll be, it'll sound like a person, but it might not ever show any emotion. It'll simply talk to you. You know, kind of, you know what it reminds me of? What? That 20 question, like eight ball thing that you shake. <laughs> <laughs> it's like maybe. Yeah, exactly, except it actually knows the answers. Yeah. So your higher level Hosman gene programs are found in areas of commerce, military, scientific, and more. Like scientists will be able to use this. So basically think about it this way. The more our interfaces are developed for our computers, the less we have to know how they work. That makes sense, right? Like, do you really know how a computer works? Do I even really know how a computer works? I know the, I know the basics. Well, I can, I can name off some parts. I don't know why they work the way they work. Though. Yeah, even our cell phones, they're complicated devices. They're simple for our generation to make. Like, there's people, like, they're mass produced, right? Sure. But the common person, the majority of people have no idea how they really work. They just know how to use them. So that's because of interfaces. An interface is a program or hardware on the device that allows you not to actually have to know how it works. And you just basically, like for example, a phone is a good example of that. You don't have to know how the phone works. Do you know how the phone connects to all the other systems? No, you just have to know the number that you need to dial. And you need to know that you need to dial it in the right order. That, that's all you have that's to know. That's hilarious how the phone's ringing right now. Yeah, I know, as I talk about that. that, that that's scary. It was a Hosman gene knowing that. Yeah, saying, exactly. Saying, listen, I'm going to give him the ring right now just to... So this is basically me doing a long version of just explaining that AI has been developed to the point where it can imitate self-awareness. Now, there's, and there's different levels. They're not all going to be 
these high level with emotions. Some of them won't have emotions. Some of them won't even use pattern recognition because they don't need to. A calculator doesn't need to do pattern recognition. It doesn't see you. you just, it just has to hear you. So it still depends on the device itself and what it does. Whereas like a scientist who do doesn't need to learn all the different scientific programs, he can simply talk to the Hoffman gene about the science that he's been discovering. He could even postulate with them, come up with ideas, and that gene would then interface with the computer systems and get all the knowledge out of it and be able to interact. So the gene is only as smart as the computer system is attached to. It's just designed to be interactive. Does that make sense? It's like a diplomat. They go the, between two different countries. Yeah, that's actually a good, that's, that's what an interface really is. Yeah. An interface is not smart in and of itself. Doesn't Unless, I guess it depends what you define as smart, but. Well, that's intelligence, right? Right. Which is that a level of knowledge, or is that the way that they interact? So you know, it, these Probably these are applied knowledge. these are philosoph. That's wisdom. That these are philosophical questions that we don't really need to knowledge. No knowledge, wisdom is no properly, intelligence. Intelligence is properly applied knowledge. No, that would, wisdom is properly applied knowledge. So knowledge, then, intelligence, same thing. Knowledge and intelligence is the same thing. Well, like maybe it depends on your. This is, we're talking semantics now. A word could oh, have okay. more than one meaning, right? Okay. Doesn't really matter. This pattern recognition allows for an instant growth in robotic technology as well. Because where robots could barely walk around a room without bumping into things, this whole neural network, this whole neural software that can finally achieve this allows for um, robots to be much more useful. Um, and we even start to see you know, people producing androids, that kind of stuff, where you get you it know, resembles a human, human looking yeah. machines, but they're super expensive. There's a reason that it's mostly the military or high level commerce or scientific stuff that uses the high level Hoffman gene because as much as he's developed this program, the high level program is still incredibly sophisticated, just like our brains are incredibly sophisticated. So this is very expensive, which is why you're going to find the lower level ones more in the market. Politics and world events. This time it's, it's a bit of an era of peace in the, the early 22nd century as you know, global warming is being dealt with and dark fusion has been introduced so a lot of the energy crisis of the world has been solved. So it's a good era. Uh, so it's relatively peaceful. There's definitely wars. There's definitely conflicts going on because when is there isn't? When isn't, when isn't there? <laughs> when is there isn't? <laughs> when isn't there? But other than that, that is the early 22nd century.